Mm-hmm. You have to spotlight both of us. Ah, there we are, friend, friend. And you can hear me? Clear as day. Okay, good. Any loud day to be from heaven. <laughs> um, God, we just thank you this morning for the privilege to... I just feel overwhelmed this morning. But it's a privilege this morning that we do not, both do not take for granted to be used by you. Not if we could roll back the curtains 30 years ago, mm. 40 years ago. Those who knew us then, those who knew us 20 years ago would say no to what you have used mm. us to do, you're using us to do today. In the eyes of some, Lord, we would not be qualified. But you qualify us and then you send us. Mm. And so, Father, I pray that whatever words that comes from our mouth, mm. God, they will be your words. Father, if there's anything that we have in script that is not in alignment with your will to speak, Lord, we will gloss over it. Just give us that sense. Mm. But, Lord, I pray that today the word that will go for it, Lord, will accomplish that which it was designed to accomplish. Mm. Father, even as I pre present this word, Lord, I am at that same place where I hear you speaking to me about this very word. This word is my word. Mm. And so, Father, I pray that as we both share, as we both offer ourselves to you as vessels through which you can work, God, may your will be accomplished and may you get all the glory. So, Father, we just give you thanks. Hallelujah. And we bless your name. Hallelujah. Name. Praise the Lord. There is a song yes. on my heart. Mm -hmm. It says, Here I am waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Mm -hmm. Hide me in your love, mm -hmm. bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. Come breathe in me all my life. Take over. Come live in me, and I will ride on eagles' wings. Lord, that's the cry of our heart this morning, God. Live in us. Breathe mm. in us. Lord, we are here. We may not be physically bending our knee, but God, our hearts are bent before you. Our hearts are bent before you, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And we just thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I just want to thank the Lord for having my sister. Amen. I would say in prefacing that some call her prophetess and it, some call her apostle and it, I call her sister and it. You know what you are to me? You're a friend. You're a sister. You, Sister Annit, you know what you mean to me. We talk about that all the time. Mm. Yeah, you know? Now, when those moments come, never will you hear phone, never, ever. And if, you don't, if I don't get it instantly, I get I know you're returning the call because I am on speed mm. dial. <laughs> so I thank you for your friendship. I thank you for being Amen. my sister. My mm -hmm. sister, that I can share my thoughts with you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for agreeing to come and be with us this morning. So how we're planning, on, what we're going to do is this, we're still open to have the Lord lead, that I am going to go ahead and Sister Annette is going to come in and she's going to take it out with the direction the Lord is allowing her to go. Amen. So this morning, Anne was privileged to, uh, and read for us in advance, Joshua 1, mm -hmm. and from verses 1 to 18. Yes. 
and she spoke and introduced us to Joshua. Mm -hmm. And we saw things in Joshua that we wanted to highlight this morning, not only for the story's purpose, but for our own lives. Because I'm sensing that we are at the cusp too of crossing over in our lives as individuals and as a church. And I think this is what the Lord would want us to have. So this is one of the times that I would suggest that you grab paper and pen. You don't want to miss what God is saying. And if and it is also recorded. Amen. So we can always go back to here. But I sense that God is saying to us this morning that you are at the place as individuals in your lives at different points. Where for Moses, he had to cross over the Red Sea. For you, for Joshua, I had to cross over the River Jordan. For yes. you and I, there's something that we have to cross over to go into, take hold and possess and to conquer and inherit mm. what he had called us to do. Crossover mm -hmm. is a place of decision. My topic, by the way, I'm sorry, is preparation to cross over and possess. Mm -hmm. And we'll be looking at the different, um, different scriptures where Joshua was introduced in Numbers and Exodus 17. So I may not necessarily be throwing out the scriptures, but you will, I'm giving an opportunity to go and read about Joshua's life. So crossing over is a place of decision. It is also a, a shift because it, 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 it's a shift of either moving aimlessly because you're wondering what am I to do next and you're busy trying everything or it's a place of where you may be stand still, where you say, Lord, I am still before you and I'm waiting. I'm not moving. But crossing over means that you have to move from you what you're doing now to the next stage, which is to move forward. It may be a crossroad. Mm. And God is saying to you, I am calling you to prepare to cross over so that you can possess. Mm -hmm. Some of us are more prepared than some because, because of what God has been doing in our lives. And some are at the place where God is saying preparation starts today. When God instructs us to cross over, whether we believe the future looks, look, looks prosperous, even if we are afraid, we must move. I'm going to repeat. When God instructs us to cross over, whether you and I think that the future looks bleak, that mean that, okay, if I, if, if I move to the next stage, it, 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 I'm afraid. It, it does not look the way that I want it to look. Or if you think that, yes, I want to cross over because I am expectant. God is saying that when I instruct you to move, you must move. Mm-hmm. Because there's always something on the other side. Even though it may require or cause you to suffer. He said, you must go across. You must move because of what I have in store for you to possess. In our text this morning, we observe Joshua preparing to cross over to possess the land God promised the Israelites. Mm -hmm. His preparation, I noticed, did not begin at the point of crossing the Jordan River. Mm -mm. It began long before that. And if you go to Exodus 17, you can see God's hand on Joshua. If you go to Numbers 32, Numbers 12, Numbers 14, Deuteronomy, you see God's hand on Joshua, preparing him Long before we got to the Jordan where Moses was then de dead. So who is this Joshua? We just want to set a background of who is this Joshua so we can move forward to show that Joshua is no different than you and I. Joshua is the son of Nun, the scripture tells us, and he's from the tribe of Ephraim. Joshua left Egypt and at the age of, tw at the age of 20 for the promised land. Moses changed Joshua's name from Hosea, H-O-S-H-E-A, which means salvation, to mm. Joshua, which means the Lord is salvation, or Amen. Yahweh saves. So we already see from beginning of Joshua's birth that even his very name, God was saying, I am going to use you 
to bring salvation. Don't take for granted your name that God alone your parents to give you. Don't take for granted the name that God allowed your parents to give you. Even yes. your name is part of your direction, part of your assignment. It took Joshua 40 years of preparation to learn to be a faithful disciple of Moses before mm. he succeeded Moses as Israel's next leader. 40 years of preparation. So you're waiting for 10 years? You're waiting for five years for an answer? Joshua had to wait for 40 years. And he had to be, to be able to learn enough so that he could hear, because he had to know God's voice, so that he could obey. And that is also part of the preparation, learning to hear, mm -hmm. to obey. Joshua mm -hmm. is considered one of the Bible's greatest military leaders for leading the Israelites across the overflowing banks of the Jordan River. And the seven-year conquest in Eric Canaan. Because even though God says the land is yours, they didn't give him as they crossed over Jordan. Seven mm -hmm. years it took him to lead the people to conquer the promised land. Joshua served from Moses as his aide from, from a youth. And he was chosen to lead the Israelites' army into battle against the Amalekites. He was not only chosen to lead the army, but imagine he was also entrusted with the responsibility to select the men who would fight with him or fight with him or accompany him in battle. What a responsibility. 20 years old. 20 years old. So you're never too young to be used by God. Joshua and the men fought and overwhelmed the Amalekites, the scripture tells us, because God gave them victory. As Moses aid, he accompanied Moses up the mountain to meet with God to receive the Ten Commandments. And he guarded the tent of meeting when Moses returned to the camp. We just see, I'm telling you, go back to Exodus. Go back to Numbers. Go back to Deuteronomy. So we see all of what God used jo Joshua to do, those were all preparation for what mm -hmm. he was to do late, 40 mm -hmm. years later. Do not take for granted what God is using you to do now. Yeah. It's small Hallelujah. in your eyes. Mm -hmm. It may look like a small task because you're in your mind, uh, you're looking at the bigger thing and you're watching, how can I move to the next? How can I be the next X and Y. And we all have persons that we may be looking at in our eyes. But look at what God was doing in Joshua. Mm. Every assignment to walk behind Moses, to carry what Moses wanted to do, those were all part of his preparation. Mm -hmm. Joshua was chosen as one of the 12 scouts to explore the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. Of the 12, only Joshua and Caleb had the confidence in God. And believe that he could help, that God could help Israel to conquer the land. That was also part of Joshua's preparation. Mm -hmm. Ten of the spies gave bad reports. Only Caleb and Joshua gave a good report. That he, despite that, the fact that they saw the Nephilim, like the other spies, they saw the fortified cities, but their report was good. Be careful what you see and call what you see while you're going through preparation. Because if you see the, what God has allowed you to see and call it bad and cause it to hinder you from moving forward, you won't be able to cross over. Mm. They had a rock solid faith in God because they remembered how God brought the Egyptians, the, the Israelites through the Red Sea and destroyed the Egyptians. And they were not intimidated by the size of the men, the Nephilim. And they were not intimidated by the fortified cities that they have never seen before. Mm. What is on your mind? What, have you, mm. what are you currently seeing that could mm. possibly hinder you from crossing over? Mm. Joshua was over, 
wholeheartedly devoted to God. And as a result, mm -hmm. he and Caleb were the only two spies who survived the wilderness experience. All the other 10 men died because of what they called, what they saw, and they did not trust God. Forty years in the desert, God took to destroy everyone who left Egypt, who grumbled against him, who could not see, who could not understand, who was not devoted, who could not trust him to take them to, cro that, to cross over. God's anger burned the scripture said against them for spreading bad reports about the land and for grumbling against him. Joshua had the spirit of leadership and he was filled with the spirit of wisdom. He was chosen and commissioned to succeed Moses and at the age of 60 was installed at Israel's leader. Can you wait? Can you mm. wait that long? Are you mm. willing to mm. wait that long or do you want it? No, because you think you already know. That is one of the things that got me. I realized that most of these men were half-baked. Oh, come on now. It took David 20 years to be king after he was anointed and appointed and ordained mm -hmm. and commissioned. It took mm -hmm. Abraham 25 years for his seed to come forth that promise. Mm -hmm. It took Joshua 40 years. Look at how long, long it took Moses. Moses, we yes. knew from the beginning of birth that Moses was called by God and chosen by God. It took him 80, 80 years. years to walk in, his, in, in the promise of God. Mm -hmm. Why do you think your preparation and my preparation is for four years, five years, ten years? And it may be less. But let us remember it is God who decides when it is time to cross over. Mm. So it took Joshua 60, 60, 60 years he was. It took him 40 years of mm -hmm. serving somebody. Imagine mm -hmm. serving somebody, having the ambition, but realizing that he cannot move forward because there's someone for him to serve. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, I don't think Joshua was eyeing the prize. I don't think Joshua was at the place where he was waiting. I can't wait for, for, for Moses to die to take over. I don't no, think he was. No, no, no. That is why God had no. to keep telling him, be, be brave and courageous, be strong and courageous. Because this was a man who was, was, was okay serving. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're not okay serving. Mm -mm. Because we want, to, we want to get into that position and we want to go further. And it's taking us too long. I hear God's mm -hmm. word. God, I hear the word said that I'm going to go, but I can't wait on your timing. I need mm -hmm. to help you along. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. People listen to Joshua as they listen to Moses because God was with him as he was mm -hmm. with him. And that is what you're knowing in him. Imagine, he never killed Moses. He never bad-mouthed Moses. He never, mm -hmm. he, he never worked against Moses. He came and he aligned himself with Moses because he knew that his place was to serve Moses, who God had called the lead as the leader. Mm. Mm. As Israel's new leader, Joshua was also preparing to cross over to inherit the promised land. So from Joshua's life, I want to, to, to give you some points of what I noticed that Joshua did in preparing before he crossed over. Mm -hmm. Joshua was attentive and he was faithful. Yes. He was, a, he was yes. an attentive servant. And he was a faithful servant. He was careful to learn and serve while he waited his turn. That sounds like, a, that sound like a, a little something that I could have tweet. He learned and served while he waited his turn. It's on a rhythm, like I could have mixed a beat to it. He learned and served while he waited his turn. Many times we are quick to... But, and he allowed God as his representative to guide Israel. 
Joshua had a rock solid faith in God. Joshua believed God's promises to give him the land. Even though the river Jordan was overflowing his banks. One of the things I noticed that was important. God said to Joshua, meditate. Meditate on the book of the law. So he said, Joshua, while you're waiting, focus on the word. While you're waiting, Joshua, Campo, focus on the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because meditation causes us to continually focus on being obedient and being faithful to hear God's voice. Meditation causes you to be attentive because once you're meditating, you're listening. You're attentive. Joshua, in his preparation, was wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly devoted. Joshua's faithfulness was always on display. He relied on God and, he did, and not on his strength to fight the battles. And he was, as a result of that, he was guaranteed victory. He had courage. God said to him, God reassured Joshua four times, be strong and courageous. Because you need courage to cross over. Obedience. Joshua knew when to get ready and when to move. Three days, camp out at the Jordan Riverbank. Three days, do not move. Obedience. Joshua obediently followed God's strange instructions and strategies. And as you continue to read Joshua, you will see if he, he obeyed and he followed strange instructions. His faith was tested. And the time that he, he, they, they, they disobeyed, we saw casualties in AI where they lost the battle and many died. Consecration is another preparation. I noticed God said to them, consecrate yourself because tomorrow you shall cross over. And I wondered, consecrate yourself. Why didn't he say, go and sharpen your swords? Why didn't he say, if okay, if I call you to this, go and study more. Start writing more sermons, Joshua. Start learning how to preach more, Joshua. Mm -hmm. He said, go and consecrate yourself. Wash your heart. Confess, mm -hmm. repent of where you are because I cannot use you on the other side if you are not consecrated, if you are not set apart. Mm -hmm. God was saying, Joshua, do a spiritual preparation for a military battle. Mm -hmm. Physical battle, but spiritual preparation. Mm -hmm. Instructed them to prepare food. To prepare the food. I heard and read it. Prepare, or, or I think it was Ruth. Prepare the food. Arm yourself at various times because of because you need to cross over. You need to be ready. And we see in order to cross over what Joshua did. The sister Annette. Mm hmm. When you think about crossing over, what, what crossing over mean to you and what comes to your heart as you hear the Lord speaking to us about us crossing over? Because you have crossed over many times. You have yes. different parts many times. Yes. Yes, crossing over to me is remembering the promise. That, that, that is to me, to remember the promise, the things that God has promised. And that's... Crossing over is believing and, and, and moving by faith that God, I am going after what you have promised. What you promised me, trusting. Just like you said with Joshua. Joshua, what, what I, what I, you said something very significant. You said Joshua was faithful. Joshua, Joshua knew how to sit. Joshua knew how to behave himself wisely. You understand? Because, listen, sometimes we sit, but we get antsy. And that's for somebody. Maybe that's for me. 
learning how to sit and to behave ourselves wisely in the sitting. Because if you sit and you pay attention, you will learn. And that's exactly what, that's why it was easy for, for Joshua to take over from Moses. Because like I said, Joshua sat for 40 years. And when he was sitting, Joshua was not coveting. Joshua was not envying Moses. Joshua didn't want to overthrow Moses. Joshua was learning from Moses. He was watching how Moses moved, how Moses operated, how Moses dealt with the people. You understand? And because he was sitting, oh, let me tell you something, sister. There is, there, there is, uh, how should I say? There is such, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but, 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 but let me tell you something. There is such, uh, Mm, let me see. Let me see the word I'm looking for. There, there is such, such a not result I'm looking. For. I'm not looking for that word, sister. But when you sit, there is something about that sitting. There is such reward. I can use the word reward that will be given unto us when we sit, sister. Because the sitting is learning. The sitting is getting mature. The sitting is keeping us humble, also, mm -hmm. not to run ahead of whatever and i believe uh, the sitting mature us because you know what when if, if the lord says sit, funny we were talking about that this morning my daughter and i and we said we cannot go ahead of god no matter how long it takes we cannot move until god says it's time to move because sister in the natural it's not going to work out in the spiritual it's not going to work out it's not going to work out on any side because nothing tastes bad like raw pudding you understand the foundation is going to fall from underneath so you see you have to wait on your time and joshua had a time of maturity 40 years that seemed like it's like a long time and but how much did joshua learn in the 40 years he learned so much and that's why the lord will have so much of us sitting and some of us will go early but you know, the ones who are sitting, you can have an idea what he's doing with you and how strong he's making. So sitting for me, sister, is that knowing that, I, 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 God, I look around and I, I cannot take this no more, God. This, this is a small space for me now. But God says, sit, I cannot move until. Because when you move with God, you know that, sister, no devil in hell can shake and remove your foundation because your foundation is in Christ. You understand? You see, Joshua, nobody could have come and overthrow Joshua because Joshua, God was preparing Joshua to be the next leader, to be the next in line. But Joshua had to wait on his time. Praise the Lord. Don't know if I answer your question. Answered. All right. I noticed also because mm -hmm. some as um sometimes while we're waiting we're bad mouthing we never did oh, no yes. that there was no mention that one because joshua was the first one to say to moses moses look down look at the, all the people behaving mm -hmm. because competing because sometimes you're waiting and you say you can't wait for the person to move out so you can't move in that, well, was, that was because joshua joshua had moses back you see you have to be careful who have you back in a sister you have to be careful who is watching your back. All is well. You notice uh, the Lord said, put on the full armor. And you notice everything went on everywhere else on the body but the back. Mm -hmm. You notice that? Mm -hmm. They needed this, that everything else was protected by the back. Because when I think of it, God watches the back, sister. God was watching the back. Mm -hmm. Because I said, I said, put on the full, put the full, put on the breastplate, put on the this. You never hear him say, put on the back plate. The back, the back brace. You understand? And this is why even in the spirit and even in the church, sister, even in your walk with God, you better be careful who is watching your back. You better be careful who is watching his back. You see, Moses knew him could have trust Joshua to watch him back. Mm -hmm. That's why as soon as Moses come down, Joshua could have said, look what the people are doing. Because Joshua was not pleased. Because he knew Moses would not be pleased. You understand? And let me tell you something. If you do not operate as a good follower, a good back watcher, 
when your time come, what do you think is going to happen to you? When your time come, when when your time come, like oh, the the the, the, the transferring of the guard, the, the transferring of the shift, whatever it is, when Moses' time was up, and it was Joshua's time to lead. You see, what you deposit, pastor, is what you withdraw. Mm. So we better be careful how we operate and how we deal with the people who are ahead of you, who God called to sit for you to sit down under. If you serve them well, you will be you will be served well. You understand? So we have to be careful and we must remember that. God will never give Joshua somebody to command to command them and not serve him good. Because he was, he served Moses well, not with envy, not with jealousy, not with backbiting, not with all of that. He watched Moses back well, not even knowing that God would have called him to lead like this. Not even knowing that. And that's what, you see, you see sometimes, um, like you said, we want what we want now. Oh, she get too old. Lord, she not remember so much. She get, we find all kind of excuse because we, we cannot wait to step in. We cannot wait to overthrow. We cannot get, because I overthrow, we are overthrowing up when we go in before a time. You understand? But you see, when you sit down, there's something about the sitting. There's something about the sitting. You know, I was saying to my daughter this morning, you know, she had been sitting you now for how long? 18 years. And I said, you know, the Lord, not, I, I didn't say the Holy Spirit said, the Lord said, what you're carrying, those who have gone on before you are not carrying it. What you're carrying. Because why? Because you sit and you behave yourself wisely. So the sitting is very important. Very important. Important. But in the sense that you said there's purpose and there's a reward in the wait. There's a reward in the sitting. Of course, there is. There is reward in the sitting. But you know what I realized to my sister is that not only is it mm. important to cross over, but to po possess is all is important. Because you can cross over, you can't possess. You can po cross over, you can't, you never conquer to possess. Because if you don't conquer, you can't possess. Mm -hmm. The scripture, but, Joshua 21, 43. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, but well, well, you see, you see the thing about that's why you know the reason why Joshua could have go over and possess because Joshua was a good follower and a good listener and a good looker. Mm. And Joshua remembered from day one what God did. You see, that is our problem. We keep forgetting what God did. Mm. You understand? And that's why Joshua and Caleb could have go up and say, We can't possess, we can't because they, they, they never forget the crossing of the Red Sea. They never forget fear of army. They did not forget. You see, we forget. We forget. I hear the sisters say, um, remind us sometimes we have to say, God, turn back the pages of memories. No again, no and again. You see, we forget. And Joshua never forget. And that's because Joshua never forget. Joshua knew who his God was. And that is our problem. We forget too quick. Mm -hmm. Go on, sister. But in, in Joshua 21, verses 43 to 45, the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their, their ancestors. Mm -hmm. They took possession of it and they settled there. Mm -hmm. so I realized from, from the crossing over in Joshua 1 to that position in Joshua 21, a lot happened in between. Hello, yes. Fight. Seven years of fighting. But there must be something. What can you share with us? What's the difference? After I've crossed over, what do I need to do to conquer and to possess? Mm. Any suggestions? Well, well, what would come to me? I, I always believe in following instruction. I'm good at following instruction. Uh, when, when, when the Lord speaks, I always say, that's why I always tell others that you must be a very good listener. You must be a very good listener and you use your eyes. Because when you listen and you use your eyes, you, you follow instruction well. You understand? So you notice Joshua went over and Joshua, like I say, took how many years? It took them seven years to possess. You understand? So everything God does, sister, is in order. 
Everything God does step by step. So you have to go by the order and the step of God. Yes, I cannot wait to get this land. I cannot wait to get what God have. But we still have to remember that God have a set and appointed time for everything. I'll do it is promised to us. And that's why God will promise you about a ministry. I just don't run out and start ministry unless God said it's time now to start that ministry. You understand? So uh, watching Moses, I think Joshua was good at following, learning how to follow instruction and direction and learning how to believe God even in the wait. Mm. How to believe God and how to wait on God. You see a lot of people, oh God, it, it takes too long. I thought we would have gotten already and we, you know, they run before God. But Joshua decided we are going to follow our direction and our instruction is coming from God. And what that Joshua did, as the Lord keeps saying, Joshua, be courageous. God, be courageous. Joshua strengthened himself. And I am sure Joshua still on and him remember, what would Moses, the servant of God, do in this case? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, because got, what, what you learn, you apply to know, you know, sister. Yes. Yes. You know, as I, as I hear you say that, I remembered um a church i used to serve in in one community and those persons would hear me talk about the pastor how he did things and there are things something they did that i don't want to do but there are things that he did that i i i, I keep remembering how would he have de dealt with that yes so i understand yes. sitting and wait and i didn't even have a, i didn't have any desire to do what he was doing so i understand what what happened to joshua i had no ambition for it Mm -hmm. And so I mm -hmm. realized that the Lord will allow you to observe, to sit and mm -hmm. observe without even understanding or having the ambition to do something. So that you but because He knows what you don't know. Amen. Amen. I think that also notice about Joshua the discipline. The discipline, and he remained faithful. He was not faithful. 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 Joshua that was the thing. Faithful with, with faithful. It. And if he was faithful to observe, to 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 and attentive to make Moses, he would be faithful and attentive to God. Well, because that's why Moses, God. That's why God trusts him, sister. That's why God could trust him, because God, 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 watching our faithfulness and our behavior, watching our faithfulness and our behavior, and and I think and that's why Joshua ended up being such a great leader, because like I say, he was faithful, he was disciplined, he was devoted. Did, he was trustworthy and that's why he ended up being the leader he was that the bible they call him the, 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 in the back they, they say he's the best leader in the bible joshua mm. a man who mm. never had to lead a man all joshua wanted mm. is to do what moses wanted him to do he just wanted to serve 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 serve, serve. serve. To serve. And God, serve. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. Nobody don't want to serve. No. All everybody want to lead. Most of us want to lead. All of us want to lead. We may not want to lead in a church setting, but we want to lead somewhere else. Serve. So I'm realizing the importance of crossing over. Because I, you said something to me. Go ahead. Yeah. You said something to me, and I and I hold that word dear to my to my to my heart. You said great leaders learn learn to first to be great followers. I remember you said that to me. You understand? Great leaders don't mind sitting under somebody. Great leader. Because like you say, I, I might not walk away with everything that, that I see you do because I might not be in agreement with it. But I know how to pick out and I know how, what not to do and what to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think about that all the time. Think about all the time. Teach us, God, how to sit and behave ourselves wisely. Yes. The thing that, because Joshua made Moses look good. Of course, he did. He made Moses look good because of what he did. And so God would have given Covered. Joshua men who made Joshua look good. Because Joshua couldn't do all of this on his own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To cause Joshua to look good, just as Joshua was there to make mm -hmm. When Moses left the camp, left the tent, Moses mm -hmm. Joshua 
he knew nobody mm -hmm. to come that close to the tent because that is where the Holy Spirit was. That was where God went. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and you know, you know, woman of God, and this is where we have to learn. And this is a problem. Some people would rather rather you get exposed and exposed, and some people would rather cover you. Mm -hmm. You know. And I, and I remember somebody was sharing something with me that this lady at church came out of the bathroom and her dress was hooked, you know, under her, her something. And she passed by so many people. And I saw it. And I look. And this one touched that one. But one sprang out and went and stood behind her. Covered her. Mm. And I think that's all. Joshua was good at covering Moses. And that's very important. And I'm sure Moses had his faults and his flaws. Oh, but Joshua sure. was good at covering Moses. And so I realize, based off what we say, the Lord is saying to us today, as we prepare to cross over as individuals, Hallelujah. over in our lives individually, we're crossing over as a church. God is saying mm -hmm. to us. What is he saying to you based off what we spoke about this morning? Sister Annette, when the Lord, learning to sit. To sit, look, and listen. Mm -hmm. Observe. Faithful. Be faithful. Be devoted. Be trustworthy. That's, that's what I'm learning from it. Be trustworthy. You know, when, 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 listen, man, when, when you start to trust who God, when, when you allow yourself to be trustworthy, then God can trust you too, you know? Because I trustworthy to those who you have called to serve or who God put before you or put ahead of you. And they can say, you know, I can trust. I, I, I can trust Sister Annette with this. I can trust Pastor Eva with this. And, and, as, and, as, God, and as you're proving to God that you're trustworthy, then hello, God will trust you. That's what God did with Joshua. Mm -hmm. Joshua proved, was proving that Moses, you can't trust me. And God is saying, I can't trust you, Joshua. Because you, 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 you remain trustworthy to Moses. Yeah. And, that's, and, and that's what I, 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 I honestly believe God is looking for a set of people he can trust. Yeah. I honestly believe that. If you don't prove yourself trustworthy, step aside. You have to go wait a little longer. Because you know what? Trusting and, and, and all of that will make God, God, take, God business take care of. And that's what God is the God wants in this season. Mm -hmm. Wants whatever he commands, he commission, he call to be done. And God will have no time waiting on nobody. Mm -hmm. So if you're not ready, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Lead our support to the side. You know, we have a saying uh, when we used to play, we used, we used to play bingo back in those days. My cousin dead and gone, she used to say, set up our ghetto. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're not playing, move around the table. If you're playing, put down the money. You mm -hmm. understand, set up our ghetto. And I think that's exactly what God is saying in this season. Because there is, you, you, you don't realize all the time winding down, sister. So much things are going. God looking for some people who are ready. Some people are serious. Some people say, God, I don't even know my foot going, but obtain it. I don't know what's going to happen, God, but I am going. I don't know where the money coming from, God. God, I cannot speak like them, but God, I am going. Here am I. You understand? And God look at some people. You think some people don't have the resources? God say. You have the resources here, but you know what? I cannot trust you. Mm. I cannot trust you. Mm. I cannot trust you because you might go and you might skin up your face and you might go and you might treat my people funny. You might, you understand what I'm saying? So God said, I'm looking for some people in this season that I can trust. Some people who, who, who will lead, some people who can be led. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, great leaders must also learn to be led. Mm -hmm. Because there's always somebody over your sister. There'll always be somebody over you. Always. Thank you. Always, always. Yeah. Yeah, they, choose. they can't have four leaders. You can't have two leaders. One have to lead. One have to make the final decision. Amen. You can't have two body, two I don't want body, you know. No. Confusion. Yeah, to be confusion. 
Amen. Thank God. Thank and you. then again, and then again in a system, mm -hmm. you, you can be a leader and you're, you're not a leader in, 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 in that area. So a leader should recognize when to step aside. It could be like when we go to Kenya. And, and like I said, I, I watch, I would realize, I would say, no, no, Marva, you, you give the people where you see they lead and they're strong. You don't push yourself in that system mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because this is somebody who is stronger. And I can say, my God, give Marva street ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give Marva street ministry and let this one start and let this one finish because they're a, they're a finisher. And not because you're a finisher don't mean that you're not a leader. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because you're a closer. Mm -hmm. You come and you close. And the, the person starts off. So you, whichever way you are or whichever, whichever part you're chosen, the role you're chosen to play, you can still see yourself as a great leader. Because what it says, God said that every part of the body is important. Mm -hmm is the significant sister. So we go not grudgingly, not in, 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 in uh, unfaithfulness to each other, with the whispering and the nonsense. We go knowing that I am going to push you. I am going to celebrate and elevate you in the areas that I know you are a great leader. Amen. Amen. And it don't make you less of a person. No, it doesn't matter what role you play, whether you start or you finish. Actually, show most, of the, time, you, like most of the time you say I'm a finisher. Don't mm -hmm. it? I'm yeah. a finisher. Mm -hmm. I, 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 if, we, if, we are, if we are um ministering, most of the time I'm the one who finish. Mm hmm I, I, I am not the one who the platform is open to and the curtain is drawn. <laughs> but you come in now as a finisher. And mm -hmm. then because all of us go together and we are leaders in our own rights. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Know your role. Mm -hmm. That's true because Joshua was a leader when he was going out there to battle. He, he was the one chosen, select, chosen to select the men to fight, to accompany him. But Moses was the one who sat mm -hmm. with his hands up. So you realize it? And there was yes. Aaron, and there was Aaron playing the role of holding the hands up. But Joshua over there fighting. But the, the, the leader of our leader was mm -hmm. the one who gave them the victory, which was God. So you realize he showed different leaders doing yes. their part. Or being a leader holding up one and ja Aaron being a leader mm -hmm. holding up when Moses sat with his hand, Joshua over there fighting, but and God showing us that he's the, the leader of leaders. And everybody mm -hmm. wrote. But you notice, if, if, and, and everybody was a leader in their, in their own right, but they needed each mm -hmm. other because yes. Moses' hand could not stay up by himself. Joshua could not fight mm -hmm. by himself. But, so but, even the no. leaders, if the leaders needed help, Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is there anything else you, you, you want to share with us at NLH, Sister Annette? Because I know you have crossed, um, crossed over many. I know you have conquered. I know you have taken <laughs> possession. Is there any crossover taken possession? And that, yeah, because there's always more to conquer. That's a good thing about while you're alive, there's always more. You can't plateau because that. And we stand still, we feel that like because we can't go on, we stand still. No, God is saying, I am preparing you to cross over again. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I, I shared something, I think, with you this morning or whatever. And I, I, and I, I just want to say something that the Lord has shown me. That not because uh, you have been to Africa a few times, it stops there. Mm -hmm. And not because you turn 65, it stops there. Mm -hmm. What is, what, what, what is God saying? God saying that there are many more. Remember I tell you that the Lord say, Africa is not the world. Mm -hmm. Africa is not the world. There are still many more cities to conquer. Mm -hmm. You understand? There are still more. So it, it, it gives me something to wonder what next God. It excites me to see what next. 
You understand? Because you said something earlier. You said 20 years ago, if, if somebody, if persons had met us, they would have said, wait a minute. She? Mm -hmm. No. You understand what I'm saying? So it gives me something to look and to say, God, let me see what you're going to do with me at this point in my life and age. And realizing that anything God say he's going to do, sister, me know we're about age again, you know. When the sister may complain about the knees and the sister may rock. And I don't even work as I said, God, if I have to go and sit in a chair and do your work, so shall it be. But I am excited, sister, because I know that this is the year where God, 2023, I think this is this is a year for the church. I really honestly think this is here for the church, but for those who, who are ready to conquer, for those who are ready to cross over, for those who are ready to, to move forward. In other words, God, I don't understand it, but if you say go, I will go. God, there are giants in the land. God, they seem bigger than me, God. They seem more qualified from than me, God. But God, if you say I must push the door and go through, I'm going through. Because you know what? I will be heard somebody's there to interpret Patwa's sister. Somebody's there to tell him what God is saying. You, you can't laugh, man. You can't smile. Somebody's there, sister. Because God would never let you go through mm. if somebody's not waiting. So I, I am excited to see what God is doing. And I, and I, and, and I am really, I, I just really think it's a year of miracles. Tell you the truth. Miracles is what you and I know. So we could not do it on our own. So it have to be God who, who do it. That's what, that's what, that's, I think this is the year of miracles where great things are going to happen. Somebody said to me and she called me and she said, boy, 2023 is going to be a rough year, you know. It's going to be a rough year based on everything that is happening. And I listened to her and I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be a great year for me. It's going to be because all the all along I have been put God was positioning me for such a time, sister. And I believe that's what God is doing with the church NLH. I think God, that's what God is doing with his people. So I hope we are positioned to cross over as a woman of God said to prepare to cross over and to possess not cross over to stand but to cross over and be bold recognizing if god put you there god send you there it is going to be okay thank you thank you so much sister annette possessing requires fighting yes possessing requires fighting and to fight your mindset because if you yes. think it's gonna be a bad year it's gonna be a bad year Mm -hmm. preparing for a bad year but if you think it's going to be a good year even though you have to fight and struggle it is going to be a good year yes and and you know what pastor nothing has ever come to me without a fight nothing so nothing has never come to me I mean, again, nothing god don't speak and bam 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 not with this host everything we have to fight it's a constant fight but as i was saying to my daughter that oh my goodness have mercy in the middle of the fight each time you you jump over another hurdle you said god it was good that i was afflicted because you jump that just but you have you jump with testimony sister that then can that can encourage somebody else who is in a fight and gone are the days when i would tell god to take it away no sister i said god give me the strength to bear down and press mm -hmm. gone are the days because i want to birth out everything that god has for me and i am still in my birthing season yes. praise be to the lamb of god amen we start in joshua joshua was 60 60 joshua was 60 moses was 80 abraham was what 90 and god did what he did to them 100 Caleb, Caleb was 85 yes Caleb was 85 and he said, he still have some fighting on me man give me the mountain give ah. me, he didn't even ask for the flat give me the mountain the high place yes yeah. so I'm really? saying, like, so there's no age that we are at that God can't help um call us to go there's no age that we are at that God won't call us to cross over so but we need to prepare my sisters and my brothers, we need to prepare. We mm -hmm. need to 
in that preparation mode. We need to consecrate ourselves before the Lord. Where, where our hearts are not ready because of fear or whatever is driving our heart not to be ready, we need to be prepared. We need to ask the Lord to teach us how to be obedient. We need to ask the Lord to show us how to be courageous, how to be wholeheartedly devoted to him. Mm. Rock solid in our faith in him, how to learn to be attentive and faithful in service to so God, wherever he has you know, it's a it's it's a ground, it's a, mm. it's a training ground, it's a dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. How well you will support where you are. It may not be even in church, it may be at your workplace, it may be in your community. If whatever he calls you to do, he's watching how faithful you are to know if you're ready to go on. Amen. 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 I am ready to cross over, sister. Yes. And to possess. Yes. Because I don't want to cross and to possess. somebody and don't know what to do. Yes. I want to know what to do. Yes. So I have to conquer to possess. So this, Amen. as we prepare our hearts, Amen. one of the things we recognize that there is necess necessary is our consecration. Yes. And I'm hoping yes. that you have your emblems prepared and have them ready before you. I just want to pray and mm -hmm. pray over these emblems. Mm -hmm. Biscuit, bread, wine, juice, water, whatever you have. Mere food, something that mm -hmm. we can ingest, but uh, but when the Holy Spirit touches it, it's not the same. Yes. And so this morning, I'm just praying that you have everything with you. And so, Father, we just present our biscuit, our cracker, our bread, our juice, mm -hmm. our wine, our, our our water, whatever we have, Lord. I present them to you wherever every person has it, whatever every, each person has this morning. I present them before you. Thank you, God. Same way, Jesus, the same way you broke the bread and gave to your disciples and told them to eat. The same way Paul remembered what you did and said, this do in remembrance of me. The same way, Father God, that we are reminded what to do, the same way we do it this morning. We are mindful that you ate and drank and their hearts were not prepared. Do I ask you this morning to forgive us that each person would confess their sins before you. Each person would come before you and, have, and be blameless so that we can have a short account, God, by coming and confessing, acknowledging, God, that we have sinned, repenting, turning away from the things we currently are used to or are or were doing and mm. come, Father God, seeking your forgiveness. The so, Father, where mm. we have sinned, knowingly and unknowingly, Yes, God, before you, Lord, sing that we done over and over and over and just can't seem to kick it. We come again to you this morning with it, God, and we ask you to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We believe mm -hmm. today, Lord, that as we eat and drink of that which represents your body and your blood, we believe mm -hmm. that. Healing will come, not only physical healing, but spiritual healing, emotional mm. healing. Father, that we will be transformed from the inside out. That we mm. will be more like Christ. That we will look more like Christ. That we will become and we will do that which you instruct us to do. So here we are, Father. Abiding us, we pray. Here we are longing for more and more of you. Hide us, God. Hide Thank us. You beneath your banner hide us in under your wings mm. cause us to know you more and more so father as we break and eat and as we mm. drink today father may our bodies respond to the healing touch of christ mm. thank where you are, where there are hidden sicknesses in our bodies we claim your healing where there are emotional pain we claim yeah. your healing where there are psychological um, sickness, Lord, we claim your healing. Where there is healing of the needing in the mind, we claim your healing. Where there is healing needed in the body, we claim your healing. In Jesus' name, may we break this morning and eat. Go ahead and break and eat. <laughs> 